Some thank the Lord for friends and home, for mercy sure and sweet. But I would praise Him for His grace, in prayer I would repeat. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Some thank him for the flowers that grow, some for the stars that shine. My heart is filled with joy and praise because I know he's mine. today. One fold, uh, one shepherd, uh, everyone, one together, you know, there's always room. Come on in. <laughs> All right, 243, here we go. The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide, and His grace so free is sufficient for me. Yes. 
still room for one. Amen. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's always room at the cross. Amen. All right, please stand with your red hymnals. Please stand with your red hymnals. We will sing 498, please. 498. 498 in your red hymnals. Yeah, we'll sing and shout the victory when we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. 498. We will skip verse 3 for time's sake. We will skip verse 3 for time's sake. Here we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. off with a word of prayer. Yes, Brother Tom, can you open up the service with a word of prayer? Yes, sir. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for <coughs> letting our church be here today. Lord, any number is good good with us, Lord, and Amen. I know that any number Amen. is good with you. Lord, I know that there are people who are in trouble right now. I pray that you'll have your hand of blessing and mercy upon thank them you. because we Jeez, don't know what they're Lord. going through, Lord, oh. and we want you to help them so that they may join us again once their troubles have passed. Amen. Lord, for those of, those of them who are still on the way, Lord, please grant your hand of protection upon them because we all know what's going on outside. There are crazy things going on, crazy people all over the place, crazy, uh, crazy drivers, amen. Um, and so please protect them from that. And Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here again today, Lord. Fellowship is always sweet. Thank you for the street preaching. Thank you for the people who were listening, Lord. They were very encouraging for the most part. Even those, they were negative we're encouraging actually, Amen. Us, Amen. it tells us that we're actually doing something for you thank you lord for showing us that heavenly father i pray that you'll please fill pastor with the holy spirit so that he may preach your word and your word only not his lord amen. i pray that you'll feed us what we need today in jesus name amen. Amen. amen all right you may be seated you may be seated ship ahoy ship ahoy yeah, 41 in your white hymnal 41 in your white hymnal please 41 in your white hymnal. And uh, we will sit, We will skip verse 2, verse 2, all right? Because 3 is really good. Okay, here we go. I was drifting away on life's pitiless sea And the angry waves threatened my ruin to be When away at my side there I dimly described A saintly old vessel and loudly I cried Ship ahoy, ship ahoy, and loudly I cry, ship ahoy. The good captain commanded a boat to be lord, and with tender compassion he took me on board. And I'm happy today, all my sins washed away in the blood of my Savior and Oh, soul sinking down, he 
merciless wave, the strong arm of our captain is mighty to save. Then trust him today, no longer delay, board the old ship of Zion and shout on your way. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout and sing on your way. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. That's for, I don't know about you, if you're lost in sin, you know what you should cry it out? You know what you should cry out? Mm -hmm. Ship ahoy! Yes, ship ahoy! And that good captain will come down and take you on board. All right, if Brother Tom can come forward and give the announcements for us. Yes, sir. Let me read the fourth quarter. Just do three. Depending on time. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Good morning, all of you here today. And all of you online, I'm looking at you guys. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so Monday, this Monday, tomorrow, will be Bible study at 8 p.m. If you are part of discipleship, we encourage you to attend at 7 p.m. Um, ask Pat, Pastor if you need his address. He will give it to you. Um, Pastor will be gone on July 1st for Virginia. So, that, so me and Sean will take over the service and we will take care of the church. Um, Missionary Hansen will be coming on July 29th. And our Sunday visitation will be at 10.30 a.m. at 101 Cedar Lane. And, okay, yeah, that's, that's the address. So it'll be at 10.30. Um, we'll, we look forward to seeing you there. Hopefully we'll get some souls, Lord willing. Um, our memory verses for this week will be Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 to 4. So let me just turn there real quick and let's read it real quick. It's going to be Psalms chapter 8. Verses 3 to 4, we're continuing our memorizing of Psalms. We've memorized like three books already, right? Psalms 1, 12, and 23. So this is our fourth book that we're memorizing, Psalms chapter 8. Um, verses 3 to 4, the Bible says, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? I, I still can't believe that God will save a wretched loser like me and he'll still listen to my prayers, amen? I mean, like the verse said, what are we that he even needs to pay attention to us? We're kind of like ants from his point of view. So, bless, blessed be the Lord, amen. Um, we actually have a treat today. Instead, instead of reading a missionary letter, I know they're, they're always nice too, but we have some testimonies that were sent to pastor oh, and the identities have been withheld for oh. the people's sake. <laughs> However, I have these letters to read for you, and I hope that it will be an encouragement to you guys. So this person said, Dear Dr. Kim, I had been following your discipleship series on YouTube for the past couple weeks, and yesterday had, had the opportunity to help lead one Sunday school child to salvation. Amen! Yeah. Using some of the principles you'd been teaching in these videos. And therefore praying not only for this young lady's spiritual growth, but that other kids in our church will also get saved. We have also ordered your assigned books from the 1611 KJV bookstore and are looking forward to furthering our study. Amen. Amen. I want to also thank you for your ministry with the Bible Believers. For the past year, my family have been following messages from the Bible Believers Network, especially from you and Dr. Ruckman. We have been convinced that the King James Bible is the truth. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that salvation must be made simple as ABC. Amen. Amen. Sadly, fewer and fewer churches are believing the Bible as a whole. We are praying that God will work God will work in our hometown, that he will raise up the true believers here and worldwide. Thank you, and God bless. Amen. Thank you, brother. That was an encouraging message. See, there's another one. Oh, man, this one's titled, You Saved Me. Oh, I wonder from what. Let's see. Pastor Kim, after almost a decade of study with Jehovah's Witnesses, I was contemplating joining them. Ooh, but something did not sit right. Amen. I came across someone on YouTube who wanted to interview you, calling you a biblical genius. I started to watch your teachings regularly, and everything I ever had a question about made sense with a disp dispensationalism Amen. approach. Amen. I stopped my study of the Jehovah's Witnesses, got back to the King James, and will join a local Baptist church. Amen. It was a very close call. They wanted me to meet with their elders, but felt I was unconvinced, although I mastered all their doctrine intellectually. Thank you so much for your ministry. Amen, sister. That is crazy. Well, thank the Lord that she didn't fall into the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're, they're 
kind of creepy <laughs> in a way. Um, here's the next one. Dear Pastor Kim, I love the videos you do because it clears things up. Amen. You are also you also encourage me to start reading my Bible more to find these things out for myself. That's good. Amen. They, then they search the scriptures, right? <laughs> Thank you for doing this and may God continue to bless you. Your videos make me understand some things about the Bible that I have never read. You also helped me realize some things in the Catholic Church that are off. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen, Amen brother. Here's another one. This person actually sent an email from far, far away. Amen. Hello, Pastor Kim. I thank, I thank God for you, your YouTube internet ministry. Your teaching, this is actually from, he actually sent this from Seoul, so in South Korea. So your teaching enlightened my, my knowledge of the truth, and it eventually led me to Bible Baptist Church in Seoul. Amen. I became aware of the problems of modern churches in 2016 when I was in Manila. Worldly music, fancy lighting, and decoration, too much work and events. Amen. No hell preaching. That's a big one. No Jesus, but man-made idols and so on. And my father's death also made me realize I do not know much about Jesus, salvation, and resurrection. Oh, man, my condolences. Um, I started studying my Bible by myself through various sources. I really learned that, that the hard way. There were still many missing puzzles that I couldn't figure out until I got to listen to your sermons. It was a moment that I saw the light. It all made sense to me what you were saying. One of the most awesome ones was the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That's a good teaching. After that, I read Dr. Ruckman's theological studies, the Revelation commentary, and also, also a few more books by Ruckman. Amen. Well, that's not convicting enough. I don't know. That's a sermon already. <laughs> um, if my soul winning method was heavily based on my personal testimonials before, it's all changed now. I give people God's words only. I abandoned both speaking in tongues and prophecies, dreams in the past completely. Amen. I also rescued three Christians from such evil influence. Amen. I believe that KJB is enough for Christians to live our faith. Amen. You're, are you washing the blood? Amen. You're in my daily prayer. I pray to God that he will raise more preachers like you, your father. I am listening to his sermons a lot lately and Pastor Lee Song Oh. I also pray for the real gospel to be preached in Korea. Amen. Thank you again for your passion for Christ and soul winning. Regards, some brother in Christ. Amen. Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. When this poor lisping, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave, then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing thy power to save. I'll sing thy power to save. I'll sing thy power to save. Then in a nobler, sweeter song, I'll sing thy power to save. If we can ask Brother Robert to take up the offering and ask God's blessing upon the church with a word of prayer. Yes, sir. Come on, Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this time, for all of us to be together here. Yes, and sir. Praises, Lord God, and we give glory to you, Lord Jesus. 
Um, on behalf of everybody who isn't here, Lord God, I know they want to be here, and I know in their heart to sing yeah. praises to you right now, Lord God. Even with the small, small people here, Lord God, everything we're living, giving for you, Lord God, I hope it, it gives glory to you, Lord God. Amen. 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 And be able to uh, you know, just do justice for you. May you fill this room up with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Good, and brother. Get, uh, um, edification from, the, from this sermon here and be convicted and come down on this altar and get right before you, Lord yes. God. Amen. In your name I pray, the holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> nice close. Isaiah chapter 35, please. Isaiah chapter 35. And we will read verse 8. Isaiah chapter 35. We will read verse 8. I went uh, over time yesterday night uh, with the teaching and preaching. Uh, this preaching, I hope that it can be explained and preached properly. Uh, my notes are a little bit different compared to my other sermons uh, with this one. Uh, it's pretty much same style, though. But uh, you all pray silently to yourself that the Lord will be in it. All right, Isaiah chapter 35, please. And we will read verse 8. And an highway shall be there, and a way. It shall be called the way of holiness. And I think God the Holy Spirit was in today's prayer. He closed in that holy name. Mm -hmm. The unclean shall not pass over it. Mark that one down. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, for who? The wayfaring men. Though fools shall not err therein. Now in this verse, I, it took me a while to understand, and I spent a lot of time trying to understand the verse, and then the Lord made me understand it, and I realized how helpful it will be concerning your life. This sermon is for people who feel like they're not spiritually progressing. And I don't mean like backsliding or something. I mean spiritually progressing. Because whether you're really spiritual or you're not spiritual, we all have something in our lives that's preventing us to spiritually progress to the next level and to grow. You got a highway that the Lord has prepared out for you, and you got to realize that when you're on that highway and when you're driving, you should be driving over that speed limit because there's no speed limit in God's highway. You got to realize that there shouldn't be any litter, any garbage, anything unclean and filthy in the highway of the Lord, and you got to make sure that you got to zoom freely. No red lights, no traffic lights, no cop cars in the way. Zoom all the way. Nothing should hold you back Amen. in the highway of the Lord. You know why? Because that highway is holy. But on holy highway, the devil, he always sends his 911s. He always throws out the litter. He always puts out wrecks and red traffic lights. Because that being is a red dragon. And no, that's not scripture, okay? I just, just sounded pretty. Just sounded pretty. But the point is... The point is, is that devil, that demoniac, he's going to put whatever in your holy highway that will prevent you to spiritually progress and to drive freely. You got to realize that when you're on the wheel, it should be Jesus Christ who should be yeah. the pilot and the co-pilot. You got to be filled so much with the Spirit that nothing will hold it back. The Spirit should flow freely. It should move freely and nothing should hold back the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you feel like something's holding you back, right? Something's holding you back to serve God more, to uh, street preach, to soul win, to preach on the pulpit if God called you to do that, to attend discipleship classes, to read more chapters of the Bible, to spend more intimate time in prayer, to grow in knowledge of the Scripture, to uh, live more holy rather than worldly, to get victory over sin and even small sins in your life. I pray today's sermon will be a blessing to you. Let's clean up the unclean litter on the holy highway. My title is Unclean Litter on the Holy Highway. Let's pray. God, my Father, wash away my sins in the blood. And Father, I pray you'll fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. No litter on my highway today, Lord. No, no litter on today, Sunday, while I'm driving, Lord. You take the wheel, Heavenly Father. It's all yours, and let the Holy Spirit take full control. And may the Holy Spirit move so freely 
that it will pierce through every single heart Amen. and it will move so fast like thunder and dear Lord God we know we can't see visible outward we can't see that visible power of the Holy Spirit with fire and wind but I pray we will get something close to that today and dear Lord God we don't need a lot of money a nice building or a lot of people for this two or three gathered in my name there am I with them says the Lord God Amen. so God you take control in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. All right, my first point, look at the verse. This will be our main verse, so keep your mark there. We're going to keep going there. First point. Notice, and a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called, what? The way of holiness. See that? you got to first realize that the way that you're driving on, the way that you're walking and traveling is holy. And I think that's a problem with people today is that the way that we all live our lives and go to church and read the Bible and then uh, do spiritual things or do worldly things that are not sinful or could be sinful, I think the problem is we don't realize that that's not us doing it. The words and the actions and everyday life and behavior that we live in, it's not your own. It's of God. Didn't the verse said, whatsoever ye eat and drink, whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God? Don't you realize that this body is not yours, but God's property? Amen. Can I repeat that again? This body is not yours. You have no right to eat that food, to say the thing that you want to say, to put the thought that you want to put the thought in, and do whatever thing that you want that is not even sinful. You have no right whatsoever to do those things. You don't even have the right to teach and preach on the pulpit. You absolutely have no right to do what you think is yours and what you can do. you got to realize it's got to be all God yep. himself that is in charge and in control. Amen. Nothing, Amen. nothing should prevent you and stop you from running on the holy highway. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, it reads, What? Know ye not? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. See that verse? It says, don't you know your body is God's temple? It's of God and not your own. So can I tell you something? I'm going to tell you this. I have no right to eat the food that I want, to put the dressing that I want to dress in, to put the kind of video that I want to put online out of my own will. It's got to be God. Now that is absolutely important you got to realize. I have no right to rest or to work to do what I have the freedom and the free choice that I want to because God gives it to you. He gives you free choice. But he wants you to give up that choice and that right to him and let him take full control out of your life. If you realize how serious your life is, don't you think that you'll start to be careful with what you say? and think the way you think and your heart will be more serious and careful as you read the word and as you pray and as you go to church and as you fellowship with the brethren and as you win souls and pass out tracts is it like a duty or something that you force to feel like doing is it like a tradition and a ritual you gotta think about this I, a lot of Christians do not open their eyes and see that some cause, some litter in their life is holding back their spiritual progress. That's why God has not been answering your prayers lately. Maybe he has, but not as richly, right? Not as smoothly or good timing as before, right? Your trials aren't getting any better, that's why. Because there's some kind of litter on your holy highway that's progressing. That's why your trials aren't getting any better. Now, you will see God's hand a little bit here and there, right? Take care and, taking care of you here and there. But not completely, right? Not as much, right? That's why God doesn't give you the joy that you always sought for. You always heard the preaching that there is joy in serving God, but you don't feel like it. Why? Because there is some litter on your holy highway. Don't get me wrong, there is that joy when we sing a hymn or, you know, when we, uh, like today, street preaching, we got a lot of reaction. Uh, like people uh, who got saved and people who responded to our ministry. But it's not as rich, right? 
it's not your happiness is not full of the joy of the Lord, right? Can you honestly can you honestly say full of joy and full of glory as 1 Peter chapter 1 says? Or it's just half-hearted joy. That's the reason why your spiritual labor feels like a struggle. It feels like a struggle to come today to church at Sunday. It feels like a struggle to go out and knock on a door and tell somebody, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you can go to heaven? It feels like a struggle to open that book and read the Word of God. It feels like a struggle to memorize Scripture, the book of Psalms, chapter 8. It feels like a struggle. It feels like a struggle to even sing a hymn. Why? Because, see, the problem is there's some kind of cause, some kind of litter that's blocking you from holy highway. And you got to realize that you want pure joy? That comes from pure holiness. Do you want pure answers to prayer? It comes from pure holiness. Do you want pure, uh, pure grace through the trials that you're going through? You need pure holiness. See, you, you can't get halfway holiness, partial holiness, 80% holiness, not even 90% holiness. You want the pure joy that you sought for, the pure answers to prayer that you wanted, the pure blessings that God has promised to you, pure and absolute purity, then you need pure holiness, and there is some litter on your highway that you got to clean off. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, this is for everybody, there's no doubt. There's no doubt this sermon's for everybody. You need to check carefully the causes that made you fall. You got to look, think now, the causes that made you fall. Then you can start to open your eyes. These kind of unconscious and invisible causes we live every day and we don't recognize and we are too blind to see. One of them is the feelings of the flesh. That could be the cause. Why don't you have the joy of the Lord? Why is it that you always complain or you become impatient or you feel miserable? There's something wrong with your body, that's why. The body's first reaction is to feel drained down and tired and depressed, that's why. See, that's the reason why. Oh, why is it that you started to act like prideful and arrogant and complaining and nitpicky? It's because there's that feeling of the flesh of anger that runs in your mind and in your body. Why is it that um, when you come to church and help out other people and start to give more money on the plate there's something that's holding you back it's because that feeling of the flesh where it does it's your desire your own desire rather than sacrifice see there's always an emotion of the flesh that prevents you from serving God all the way why is it that you struggle even to sing a hymn because the flesh is not moved by that it's moved by Taylor Swift it's moved by Lady Gaga it's moved by that drum beat it's moved by that electric guitar it's moved by that see that's the cause it's the feelings of your flesh one of the other causes it could be is that the people you hang around with don't you realize that the way you act and talk, it, it, it shows what kind of friends you have? That's good. That is an important lesson I learned. This is something you want to hear. Your attitude, your conversation, the person that you are shows what kind of people you've been hanging around with. That's why your lost friends and pe your lost family members and backsliding Christians can tell there's something different about you when you started to attend our church, right? Amen. Amen. See, people you hang around with is very telling. That's why some of you probably got a little bit more pumped up in street preaching today because there was a sermon, a preacher you hung around with about are you washed in the blood? Amen. See that? Amen. People That's you what? hang around with is very telling. Can I also add this? That way it can bring more conviction and even to this pastor too. The atmosphere and the spirit of the members is very telling. The church's attitude and heart is very telling yes. by the kind of person that you are. Mm -hmm. If the church has this kind of down attitude, it's because of you and it's because of somebody Come else on. and God forbid the pastor. Amen. And I notice that. Amen. I notice that. See, the people you hang around with. Not only that, what about before you sin? Before you hold yourself back from spiritually progressing? Did you ever recall what the Bible said first? See, maybe that's the problem. It's because you didn't recall what the Bible said first. Before you put that bottle in your mouth, did you ever quote the verse 
First, seriously, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Before you watch something perverted and lustful on the screen or on the billboard or on the image and anybody you see walking across the street, did you recall what the Bible says first? Whosoever looketh on a woman and lusteth after her in his heart hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Did you do that? Let me give you a simple one. Did you ever quote this verse, which should have been common sense, before you sin? Did you ever quote the verse, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee? You didn't even do that. Amen, that's good. That verse probably could have saved your life. That's why there's something that's holding you back from progressing on Holy Highway, because you didn't recall first what the Word of God said. You didn't recall first what you heard from the Word of God at Sunday preaching. You forgot it immediately. You're like all pumped up. You get into conviction. You come on the altar. But man, it just goes away after that when you hit Monday and Tuesday or Wednesday. And weeks later, you forgot. The words of God that were, that were shown in his book and what he's trying to speak to you today through the pulpit, through the preaching. You don't recall those things first. Before you say, oh man, I'm tired to go street preacher. I'm tired of knocking on doors. Oh, I don't feel like going to church today. Did you recall the verse first? Did you recall the verse first? Where it says, where it says whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Did you do that? And I, you ever thought about maybe one of the other causes that's holding you back is probably because of, this is the thing I see in, Every, and I mean every single person, backslider and the highest, most spiritual person. Pride, pride, and pride. Self-attention. That is also another reason why you're preventing you from spiritually progressing. I don't care how many verses you know. I don't care how many sins you cleaned up. I don't care how good you preach or how well you can teach doctrinally. You memorized every single thing that you can draw it out or speak it out purely from memory. You are not spiritually progressing when you've got some kind of pride in you. And that pride is in you when, that's why when somebody questions you and then opposes you and then you get into an argument with somebody or get into a debate or there's some kind of personal problem that a family member is going through that conflicts with your personal problem in your family. Oh, your kid fought with my kid and spat on my kid on the playground and blah, 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 blah. You know what? You know what the problem for all that is? Pride. And that kind of pride is, it runs in every single Bible-believing church. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And that's why I'm pointing all of you Bible-believing churches out. I never am more disgusted in my life with a bunch of self-righteous, prideful hypocrites. Amen. That's good. That's why you're not spiritually progressing. I don't care how many souls you got saved. I don't care if you got like... Uh, 27,000 subscribers online or something like that. I don't care. I don't care if you got like 87 or 86,000 subscribers online. I don't care if you call yourself Baptist Church. I don't care if you call yourself Bible Believer. I don't care if you call yourself New IFB. I don't care if you call yourself Ruckmanite or whatever. I have no care in the world. I don't care who you are, what you are, how many souls you want to Jesus Christ. You're not spiritually progressing because of your pride. Wicked person you are. Not, you ever thought about another cause why you fail and you're not spiritually progressing? Is because you don't observe your outward actions. It is so easy not to observe your outward actions, how it appears in the eyes of people. You know, one person might say that, oh, you know, uh, that was uh, pretty offensive. That, that was, you know, that kind of joking attitude was bad. Uh, you know, you're too light, uh, you're too overtly serious, you know, you don't have good manners and stuff like that. And to us, we don't really see it that way. And it's so easy to get in our own world and say, I don't see it that way. But guess what? When God plays it on television and you observe yourself, how your eyes looked, how your voice was like, how your mannerism was like in the person, you will turn red faced and you will be embarrassed. And not only that, God has to keep playing where there were people in your life that pointed out and saw some kind of bad testimony in you, pointed out some deficiency in you. 
and you'll see this person saying that, that person saying that. You'll hear preaching and preaching and preaching, saying that cons consistently, and you keep ignoring that, and you keep acting the way you act, talking the way you act. That is not a good testimony in the eyes of people, and you will turn much more red-faced at the judgment. Ooh, getting quiet in here, right? See, that's the thing, is that you got to be care careful. One thing I learned is this. I didn't realize how much I need to correct myself. I thought what I preached and what I taught, how I acted, was good until I see myself online. Yeah. See that? Until you, until you see yourself at the judgment and you start to realize. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, uh, what I, uh, that's not, I'm not saying that whatever I preached and taught online was wrong, etc. You know, I won't go back what I said. I believe what I said was the truth even after careful consideration. But I do notice this. When I look at myself online, it's more easier to see the flaw and the deficiency. Yeah. And you got to realize that's how it's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. And your heart better be right with God and better right with an answer saying, Lord, I can say with confidence what I did there was not wrong. See, something is holding you back from holy highway because you're not observing your outward actions in the eyes of others. That's why. My second point, the uh, look at the main text again, Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. 35 verse 8. Look at the second part of the verse. The unclean shall not pass over it. That's a verse I want to like mark memorize, repeat, repeat, repeat in my head. And that's going to be the theme throughout this sermon. That you got to have that determination. Nothing unclean will pass. You will not pass, you got to say. You got to get out that sword of the spirit. And when sin and when something, some burden and extra weight holds you back from serving God, you got to have the sword of the spirit blocking that holy highway and say, you will not pass. Come on, Amen. Preacher, come on. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those who, the wayfaring men. That's you and I. We're wanderers. We're strangers and pilgrims in this wicked world. So we're going to keep wandering and keep traveling on until we reach the celestial city, until we reach Mar Mount Zion. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful to Zion, and nothing's going to hold us back. So... What is allowed? What did you let pass into your highway? Was it worldliness and sin? Was it worldliness? Was it sin? Sometimes you got to realize this. You got to realize that now I don't want people to misunderstand me, okay? Being worldly is not a sin. But being worldly is a sin. Okay, now I know that kind of sounded confusing, but let me try to make this more specific so you can self-contemplate yourself if what you do is spiritual, see? One example is concerning about uh, worldliness. Now I know some people do this, okay? Even the most godly Christians, okay? John R. Rice said, I love Lu talked about I love Lucy at times, okay? But like about television, for example, see? Sometimes, you know, that, I mean, that's worldly television, but, you know, there's nothing wrong to mention some of the stuff here and there. Sometimes I hear some of you guys talk about, you know, how corrupt the government is. It's like the Matrix, you know, stuff like that. I, I even drew a picture, Superman, you know, that was the worldliest that I got, you know, Superman versus Iron Man. You know, that was the worldly, worldliest that I ever got in teaching. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. But it can be something wrong, right? Because... Maybe now you talk about something that's unclean in television. Maybe you talk about something wrong that you watched. Maybe stuff like that now becomes sin. And maybe let's say it's not sin. Let's say it's not sin, but let's say a little bit of excessiveness in worldliness. Like, oh, did you watch the latest movie that came out? That's like really worldly now, right? See, See that's why concerning this kind of topic, it's abstract and because it's abstract that's why you need to carefully consider in your heart if that thing is holding you back from spiritually growing yes. your holy conversation right holy holy conversation holy attitude holy thoughts holy dressing holy perspective of life 
Those things change because uh, when you watch something dumb on the screen, because it gives you a fantasy. It gives you the, uh, their ideal way of living. I hope you understood me so far. I hope this didn't sound abstract. I hope that silence is conviction, not that you're lost. But the thing is, is that, see, that's why concerning stuff like this in worldly, it's not just television, it's anything in life. The places that you go, how you're entertained, uh, what you talk about, the games that you play, etc. The thing is, is that are those things holding you back spiritually? That's and that's, and how you can tell is, check mark the causes, did you recall what the Bible said first before you played that game, before you watched that show? Let's go back and check the cause again. Did you uh, observe your outward action, how you appeared in the eyes of others? I think that would cut your television and Hollywood conversation even shorter, don't you think? Come on. You ever check this kind of cause? Ha did you ever thought about the people that you hung around with? The kind of people that you hung around with probably shows the kind of conversation that you talk about. Maybe that's why you're being too worldly, don't you think? See? So remember these causes that I mentioned out before. I'm going to repeat them again. That way you can remember. Did you recall what the Bible said first? Did you have a self-attention pride attitude? Did you observe your outward actions, how it looks like, how it appears in the eyes of others? Did you consider about the people you hang around with? Did you thought about the feelings of your flesh? Keep thinking about these five causes as we go through every one of these litter, this garbage that's on your holy highway. That's why what drug you're struggling with, what alcohol you're drinking, what cigarette you're smoking, gambling, your gambling actions, what you watch on television, what you play and type on the computer, what you look at at your cell phone, the kind of conversation that you have, the kind of dressing that you wear, the kind of sexual perversions that you're struggling with, the kind of music that's wrong that you're struggling with, and other sinful addictions or non-sinful worldly things. Did you ever check yourself? Is it because of the people that I hung around with? Did I quote scripture first before I did it? Did I observe my outward actions how it appeared in the eyes of others. And then you will realize that those things was the cause why God hasn't answered your prayers, why you didn't feel pure joy in the spirit, why you didn't feel like that the church service is full of glory and you're not excited for Jesus Christ. Are your eyes getting open now a little bit? Amen. That's why I hate this God-forsaken world. If there's something that I hate, it's this God-forsaken world. I wish I can isolate myself like an Amish person and run my YouTube ministry, just go in the Amish way, have my own little groupie and a house church where we can all enjoy life together in holiness because I hate this garbage of the world. But you got to realize that we're supposed to be wanderers, as that verse says. We're strangers, foreigners in this world because we got to reach people out there who are going to hell, who don't know Bible believing truth otherwise you would have been like them if somebody didn't try to reach you in your place Amen. what about the things of this world the things of this world I talked about worldliness but now let's talk about things of this world it's not like worldly okay but now we're talking about things of this world your possessions see is that the cause that's holding you back from Bible reading, from prayer, from visitation, from street preaching, from growing more holy in Jesus Christ? Your whole attention is on a nice area that you want. Your whole attention is having a nice house or keep the bills running to maintain that house. The money, you have to spend all that time to develop more money to take care of the bills. And that's why your attention was diverted from the Word of God into the credit card bill statement. Is it because of the clothes that you want to maintain? But then those clothes are starting to fade away. You don't have enough money to buy neat clothes. Uh, you can't go as shopping as freely anymore. Or you're spending too much time online trying to find the right kind of clothes. Is that diverting? Is that holding you back from spiritually growing? What about your car? Get enough money to pay a car. Keep it waxed and nice. Get enough money to buy a nice car or to, you know, put a special engine in there or make modifications with it. What about your, anything that you want to do? Any hobby, any fun thing, any convenient thing that you want to do in life? 
Are those things holding you back from your Bible reading, growing in your Bible reading, growing in your prayer, growing in fellowshipping with the brethren? Is it because you need some time off to, um, wow, to vent out, yeah, to vent out so that you can spend all that time in pleasing yourself with fun, the things of this world? Is that what's holding you back from serving God? The unclean shall not pass over it, you need to say. You need to look at that house and say, you shall not pass. You need to look at your card and, car excuse me, and say, you shall not pass. You need to look at the money and say, you will not pass. You need to look at your clothes. You need to look at the nice area that you're at. You need to look at the entertainment places. And you need to look at the theme parks. You need to look at the museums. You need to look at all the fun things that San Francisco has to offer that's not sinful. And you need to look at those things and say, you will not pass and take away my time from attending church and reading the Bible and going street preaching and visitation and growing in the Lord, you will not pass. That's what you need to do. I'm not saying that if you do those things, it's wrong, it's sinful. It only becomes sinful when, remember, did you recall what the Bible said first? Did you do that first before you did it? Was it because of the people you hung around with that caused you to do those things? Is it the feeling of your flesh that was prioritized that you did it? Or did you thought about, my body is the holy temple of God? And trust me, when you think like that, and when you figure these five causes, you can, don't hesitate to buy that car, to uh, go to some museum or theme park, or hang around with those people who are not saved. Don't hesitate to do those uh, keep those worldly things to enjoy those worldly things because God hath given us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. See, I, I keep trying to stress here. See, this is not sin areas. We're not talking about sin areas here. We're talking about things that are abstract that the devil hath blinded you in because he kept it abstract and you never realized that, that those were the causes that robbed you of your time from growing in the Lord. Yes. What about discouragement, depression? You know, it's understandable that there are times that you go, it's not like when something bad happens. You go, oh, praise the Lord, you know. My loved one died. It's not like you do that, okay. But the thing is, is that that discouragement, that depression, you got to look at that and say, you will not pass. When your health is getting worse and things are getting bad and you feel the pain, you got to look at the cause and say, is it the feeling of my flesh that causes me to get depressed and lose the joy of the Lord? You ever thought about that? When your money's running out and you don't have enough money to pay your bills and you're struggling financially and you're getting depressed about it and you're getting worried, worried, sick about it, did you ever recall what the Bible said? First, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And did you keep repeating that? And did you thought about that first before you looked at that credit card bill? You're probably discouraged and depressed because you go through loneliness in your life. And it's hard when uh, people forsake you and they criticize you. And when you stand for Bible-believing truth, especially people online know what I'm talking about, it's hard to serve God by yourself. And you get discouraged, you get depressed, and you get lonely. But have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about that the people that you hung around with, that cause, is the reason why that you thought that companionship and socializing with people because you keep seeing the people how they have a good time how they're enjoying things how they help each other out and when you keep looking at that that's why you become lonely and depressed and discouraged perhaps that's the cause the people you hang around with if you hung around with jesus and me jesus and me jesus and me jesus and me the people you hung around with well i don't have good godly people to hang around with pastor no you got jesus christ he never left you nor forsake Amen. you. Did you hung around with often? Just him and you and your mind will get cleaned off and it'll change the warped mentality that you have that I'm all alone and I'm depressed and I have not, nobody with me. You got online. Yeah. You got online. You got teaching and preaching that Amen. helps you consistently. Amen. 
Lack of spiritual results. You don't have a lot of people at church. We didn't see many souls get saved. Uh, the offering's getting lower, and then the building's getting more run down, and what are we going to do? You get discouraged, you get depressed, and, oh, is it because of the people that you hung around with? That's why you become discouraged and depressed? You keep looking at other pastors, and even Bible-believing pastors who have more members than you, who want more souls than you did. Perhaps some of you who are struggling out there, and you look at our internet ministry, that you get depressed about your result in your ministry, and you got to realize those are the causes to your discouragement and depression. See, it's because of certain people that you keep looking at. It's so easy when I, there's not a wrong with hanging around with Bible-believing Christians who produce great fruit for God. It's encouraging. But guess what? It can be depressing too. Because you labored so many years and you didn't get it yet. So you know what I think about? I think about the nobodies, the so-called nobodies and small-time preachers out there and Bible-believing missionaries, Bible-believing preachers. Whenever a Bible-believing missionary, his letter is read, man, I, I quit getting discouraged about my own small spiritual successes in this church. Amen? Mm -hmm. You read those missionary letters, right? How much they're struggling, how much they couldn't even get one soul saved that month. See, that's the cause. So keep hanging around with the people, what? Who are small fries, yet serving God faithfully. Amen. And you get more encouraged, don't you think? Yes. Rather than discouraged with your lack of spiritual results. You face ridicule and criticism by fellow Christians and by sinners. And then you get discouraged and you get depressed. But uh, you got to think about, you got to keep thinking about, you know, what is the cause that made you depressed? That made you discouraged with people isolating you? Perhaps it's because that you don't observe your outward actions in the eyes of others. You don't realize that, sure, there are people who make fun of you, put you down and criticize you, but when you carefully reflect yourself on how you look at others and then how God will see it, you would probably not get depressed and discouraged. You would feel more encouraged that at the judgment seat of Christ, when I see how I look outwardly, when fellow Christians and sinners ridicule me, and yet I stand for what is right, and my heart is right, that looks really good. What are the causes that gets you discouraged and depressed through these things? Self-attention, pride. You don't observe your outward actions in the eyes of others. You don't recall what the Bible said first. It's because of the feelings of the flesh. It's because you're used to how the emotions of other people feel because you hang, hung around them too often. Busyness. You're preoccupied with job. You're preoccupied with school. There are other things in life that you're spending so much time being busy. And you gotta look at the you gotta look at your workplace, you gotta look at your school, you gotta look at something that you're so preoccupied in, and you gotta say, You will not pass. But how do they pass? It's because of the people you hung around with, right? Everybody's doing it. It's natural. I know of Christians who can't come to church because they're so busy with this school subject. So if they can do it, I can do it too. This person is so caught up with work, so busy with work. So if they're doing it to skip Sunday service, I can do it too. You see that? that those are the invisible causes that you need to repent of and clean up in your life. What about uh, tiredness, right? During suffering, it's so easy to get tired. During busyness, it's so easy to get tired. And then because you don't take care of your health well with the proper diet, proper exercise, that's why you get tired. Because you have no desire to read the Bible, you fall asleep when reading 1 Chronicles chapter 1. That's why you get tired. See, the thing is, is that you got to realize and check yourself, what are the causes for that? What are the causes? And you need to look at tiredness and say, you will not pass. You will not pass. Oh, I'm tired, and oh, I don't know how... Uh, well, maybe, did you ever thought about how do I look in the eyes of others? You come to street preacher, oh, like that. And if you look at that, the judgment seat of Christ, I think you'll think twice before coming out like that. I think you'll come in, no matter how tired you are, and come to street preaching, and then preach, and hold a sign, and pass out a track, and come to church with the joy of the Lord. Amen. There's also... There are so many things. There is impatience. There is a bad spirit. There's also uh, that critical spirit. 
from a nitpicky attitude, from all the knowledge of the Bible, with a legalistic attitude, a complaining attitude, all these things, they occur, and you got to look at them and say, you will not pass, you will not pass, before you nitpick something. Then you got to say, no, 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 stop, block, you will not pass. Before you complain and say, oh, this bad thing's happening, you got to say, nope, stop, shut up, just shut up, Gene, just shut up, you will not pass. You need to look at that. What are the causes for that? Is it because of the feeling of your flesh? It does not feel good. Your anger emotion is stirring up. Your bitterness emotion is stirring up uh, against, Lord, why has this happened? That, that attitude like, oh, uh, Lord, why? And, you know, that thing is stirring up. Maybe those are the causes because of the feeling of your flesh. Maybe because of the people you hang around with. You see other people, you know, having it better than you do. So because you keep hanging around those kind of people, that's the reason why you have a nitpicky attitude. You have a complaining attitude. You'll have a, a legalistic attitude and all that kind of stuff because then you'll start to whine and complain about everything in life because you think everything's unfair to you. You got to realize that uh, those things need to be repented of. You need to carefully look at the cause and look at those things and say, you will not pass. Things that waste your time, you need to look at those things and say, you will not pass. What's wasting your time? Didn't you know I realized that there are things in your life that really eat up your time? There are things that really eat up your time, you got to realize, without you knowing about it. Work and school can unconsciously waste your time. And I mean waste, not use the time well. I mean waste. It's wasting time. Why? Because there's a thing you got to realize called time management. Now, I know that... Look, I went through the phase of work and school and busyness, all right? But there is something that you got to realize. It's never an excuse to drop Bible reading, prayer, Sunday services, etc. I learned that as a fact when I looked at my life and looked at time management. You ever thought about there are ways that I can study faster? There are ways that I can cut this time and work shorter. There are ways, there are ways, there are ways. You ever thought about... Conversation can even be time consuming. John Wesley had a rule, I won't talk more than 25 minutes. He sometimes had that rule. You gotta realize conversation can be time wasting too with the people that you talk with. And it makes you lag behind on other important things in your schedule that you gotta be doing for the Lord. Uh, television, internet, stupid games and stupid movies and stupid internet, stupid social media, consume your time without you knowing about it. Some of you are better off not watching YouTube. J just good advice, all right? Now, I, I feel I'm saying this loosely. I know, thank God, you found our ministry online and YouTube. I don't want you to quit watching us. But man, if that's wasting your time from Bible reading and prayer, yeah. you should shut off all the notifications on YouTube so that some pretty little picture, some pretty little title, something that p catches your interest, like Obama is the next reptilian or whatever crazy stuff like that you won't waste your time clicking one hour on that That's Amen. you gotta look at those look at that television you will not pass look at that internet you're not gonna pass look at your mouth that's wasting all that time and say you will not pass look at your job place before you go to work in the morning look at the job and say you're you will not pass. Before you look look at your school books, your school papers, look at them and say you will not pass. You're not going to cough my time. You're not going to cough you're not going to hold me back from spiritually progressing. Amen. That's good. Now again, all these things, some of them is sin, but a lot of these things are abstract, right? And they're not even sinful, right? but they become sinful when they're holding you back from spiritually progressing and you don't even know it because you never th quoted the verse first before you did it. Because you never noticed how your actions were like from the people you hung around with, from the people you saw. You never noticed how your flesh felt. You never thought about how you look outwardly in the eyes of others and how God would see it at the judgment when he plays it on a screen. You never looked at yourself and said, maybe I was just too attentive to myself. I have a self-attention problem and a pride issue. When you clean off these things, trust me, you will progress. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, and I'm going to guarantee this to you. You will progress. You will th see things improving in your life. No, And yes, you are sinful. You are flesh. But I guarantee you this, and I promise you this, if you 
carefully look at these five causes and start to say you will not pass, you're going to see major significant improvement in your life even when you fall, even when you make mistakes. Because my third point is an encouraging verse, though fools shall not err therein. Gene Kim's a fool, bless God. You guys are a bunch of fools, bless God. You are such a fool that you keep letting God down over and over again. You're such a fool that you didn't even read through the Bible even one time yet. You're such a fool you didn't even let one soul to salvation yet. You're such a fool that you didn't get victory over that sin problem yet. You're such a fool that you kept thinking about excuses and using things in this life from holding you back to serve God, to attend church. You... You are such a fool, a blatant fool. Gene Kim is such a wrong fool. We are fools for using these things from holding us back to serve God. But I promise you this, like I told you before, if you look at these five causes, look at them straight at the face and say, you will not pass, you will not pass, you will not pass, then Romans 14.4 will say, Who art thou that judgest another man's service? servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. You will see improvement in your life. You will see souls saved eventually. You will see God answering your prayers eventually. You'll notice your thinking, your attitude, conversation is cleaned off even more. You will experience, you will feel more joy in your life. You will see the power of God and his miracle working more in your life when you look at those five causes and say you will not pass. And I promise you that no matter how many times you fall. You're a fool, but the fool shall not err therein. You can't go wrong when you're on holy highway. Amen. That's why. Amen. You can't go wrong when you're on holy highway. When you're on holy highway and you clean off that litter, the things that are causing the blockages, you can't go wrong. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, it says, He that, often, that being often reproved hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be, be destroyed, and that without remedy. That verse says that you're going to get hurt real quickly if you keep ignoring like you've always been so far, right? And then your eyes got open probably today. If you continue to treat it as, I'm fine, you know, it's not that much big of a deal. I think you're making it a, too much of a major thing, preacher. you, you got to realize this. That kind of weakness and indifference is what made you hurt to begin with right now. Don't you think so? So you think you're fine? You think you're all right? Then, then why is that litter that you keep remaining in your highway hurting you? huh? Why are you getting discouraged and depressed? Why isn't God answering your prayer? Why do you feel miserable with your Christian life if you think you're all right? See, you're not all right. This is a major problem, see? You got to realize that this minor thing, which is may not be sinful, which may not be an addiction problem, which uh, may not be excessively worldly, it did become a problem in your life, a major problem in your life. Because it's hurting you. You don't feel 100% joy like you used to. You don't see 100% answers to prayer like you wanted. You're not seeing the kind of fruits that you want God to work in. You're not seeing the kind of uh, spiritual success in your life or God finally blessing you. You don't see that. Why? There's something wrong with you. If you think you're fine, then don't blame God if he keeps prolonging answers to your prayer. If you think everything is good with you, don't blame God when you're still struggling with your miserable your misery right now that you're still going through, that you don't have that joy of the Lord. Don't blame God that you're not enjoying God's blessings he's given to you in your life. Don't blame God then. If you think you're all right, you're fine. Then you should enjoy that misery. Enjoy the lack of answers to prayer. I didn't say no answers to prayer. I said lack of answers to prayer. Lack of joy. Lack of living for Jesus. Lack of producing fruit. Don't blame God. Keep up the good work that you're doing. I mean, you led a hundred souls uh, last year, right? Nothing wrong with you, right? You've seen God answering five or ten of your prayers. There's nothing wrong with you, right? Or is there something you want more? Or is there something you feel like is missing in your life and you know you're not right? And you want more from God. I want more, God. I want more. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We got to follow what Jesus Christ did. We are Christians, so we have to follow Christ. Christ, what he did was when he went on his way toward Calvary, on that highway of Calvary, he despised anything that blocked his path. He despised the shame. He set aside every weight. The only weight he carried was the cross. And he took up that cross and he won't let anything hold him back. Nothing will hold me back, Father, from saving Gene Kim's soul with my blood. Yes, and he had that determination, that fixed mindset. That's why he was able to succeed. Because he humbled himself so much, he became exalted. You want God to exalt you? You want that answer to prayer? You want that joy? You want something to God exalt in your life that you want? You need to despise the shame. You need to embrace that cross. Carry your cross with pride for Jesus Christ. Don't let anything hold you back. And despise the shame. You need to despise that discouragement. Despise that depression. Despise that worldliness. Despise that sin. Despise that worldly possession. You need to despise the tiredness and the busyness. The critical spirit. The thing that wasted your time, the impatience and that bad spirit, that legalism, that knowledge, that nitpickiness, that job, that school, that suffering, that health problem, that money and everything of this world that you need to despise those things and you got to have nothing passing by except God Almighty. No person allowed. Nothing allowed except God. That should be your side. You get the sword of the Spirit. You need to be determined and say, you will not pass. You will not. Tiredness, you will not pass. Complaining, you will not pass. Television, you will not pass. Work, you will not pass. School, you will not pass. And you got to go, you will not pass. You will not pass. I'm not asking you to do some kind of great dedication, making a vow that, Lord, I will never do this thing again. We all sin, we all fall short. But what I'm asking you to do is to claim the grace of God and say, by your grace, Lord, and you need to look at the causes, not the ones that you're struggling with, but those five causes, see, the feeling of your flesh. Recalling what the Bible said first, your self-attention and pride, observing your outward action in the eyes of others, the people that you hang around with. All I'm asking you is those things, those things. You dedicate yourself and say, you will not pass. And I promise you this, eventually, gradually, progressively, that's why you will progress. You will see that tiredness, busyness, critical spirit, things that waste your time, impatience, bad spirit, things of the world, worldliness and sin, won't hold you back as much as before. You need to have that determination and say, you will not pass, you will not pass. And if you at least have that partial dedication on just those five things, that kind of dedication, I will not compromise, I will not let you pass. You're not gonna squeeze by. On just those five things, that much enough will progress you on holy highway. And you, I promise and guarantee and guarantee you over again, you will progress. Every head bow and every eye shut. Don't let anything hold you back on hold, holy highway. Don't let anything hold you back on holy highway. The altar call is open and you can spend that time to run to him on the highway and dedicate yourself. Say, God, I'm not going to let this pass from now on. I'm not going to let this pass from now on. I'm not going to let this pass from now on. I'm not asking you to say, Lord, I'm not going to let heroin pass by me from now on. I'm not telling you to say that. I'm just simply asking you to say, I will not let those five things pass. My self-attention and pride. I will not let the feeling of my flesh pass. The people of, that I hang around with pass me by. I will recall what your word says and will not let that pass me by. I'm going to observe my outward actions in the eyes of others. 
those, just the, the causes, not the problems you're going through, but just the causes that caused your problem. And I promise you, you will change. It's that unclean litter on the holy highway that you need to repent. You need to say, you're not going to pass. You know, I, you know what I did, man? You know what kept me pastoring this church? I told you before that I'm human, I'm flesh, and I can quit. I said that several times because I admit I'm flesh. But I also said, by the grace of God, I will not quit. And I kept doing that every time that I drove to church. When I first pastored a church, I had to drive through five hours of traffic. And I said, you're not going to pass. I'm going to go no matter what. I said, this feeling on my flesh is not going to let me pass. And I'm not going to let it pass. I'm not going to let it pass. That's why I didn't pass. Don't let anything block you on Holy Highway. And you just keep going on. Don't let it. Once you let it pass, you fall. Okay? Once you let it pass, you fall. It's over. Put up that sword and keep pushing it away. Make a determination. I'm not by the grace of God. No, you're not. No, you're not. You wake up in the morning and, man, that so tired, so heavy, tired and heavy. That's why you, you're going to skip Bible reading. You're going to skip prayer. But you got to tell tiredness, not the Bible reading part, not the prayer part, but the tiredness that is the cause to the problem of skipping Bible reading and skipping prayer. The cause. You need to look at the cause, which is the feeling of that flesh in the morning and say, you're not going to let me pass. And then you're going to drink some coffee. You're going to run outside or you're going to do push-ups or whatever. And then guess what? Then it gradually progresses where you can now read the Bible more easily and pray more easily. It's the cause you can't let pass. Those causes. Invisible, unconscious, and it can be demonic and hellish and wicked causes that hold you back from serving God. God, my Father, I pray today's preach and has been a blessing to the hearers. Lord God, God forbid there will be litter on Holy Highway for San Jose Bible Baptist Church. I pray, God, we're going to progress and not go up and down, up and down, up and down. Lord God, aren't we tired of that, Lord? Aren't we tired of that, Lord? Lord God, I pray that we will march on and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God, 
and that he died buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins I put my faith in that alone to save me not my good works in Jesus name I pray amen congratulations my friend if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you then you are saved it's that simple my friend now my friend it is important to grow in Bible believing truth you now know the truth what are you going to do about it as the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his to set up his kingdom even more there are many souls dying and going to hell and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine it is up to you now on what to do and go to our resources site www.bbcenglish.org and click on the resources link over there and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace the next step of your journey now is up to you we've done our part giving you this movie all of it was done for free by the love of the people god bless you <laughs>